brought uh, several paintings and we're going to show three of them. Um, I really like this one. My favorite is the last one, which we're going to save till the end. Um, this one you said you painted. Uh, when did you, why don't you, I tell you what, let's start, but let me ask you, what is your, uh, what's your story with art and how did you get started and all that? I love looking at the scenery, the beautiful hill country, the animals that are in the area, and to be able to take something that means a lot to me visually and be able to paint it was mm -hmm. a dream. And so I had the opportunity to start painting, um, painted with a really When was this? Uh, about three years ago. Oh, three years ago. Yeah. Oh, and when you said you painted this a long time ago, I, you know, I didn't oh. realize it. <laughs> it's all relevant. Yeah, yeah, right. But uh, really awesome supportive group and round yeah. top and uh, painted with these ladies and realized that the things that I did love, love to see, I was able to put down on canvas and, and I enjoyed it and mm -hmm. liked it and just kept going and going and uh, I still enjoy sitting down and painting as right. much as anything right now. Tell me, so, so what was the method that you used when you painted this one? What? Uh, I, I used your method and, uh, and your, uh, your paint uh, would never be able to produce something like this if I hadn't have used those exact methods. I tried to stay true to form. Oh, so this was, at, I, oh, I, I thought this was painted, uh, this, so this was painted after you'd watched my videos. Yes. So you're kind of yes. trying to do my method when you did this, yes. with color checking and the whole right. thing. And actually, this painting probably is about two, two years ago, somewhere on, in mm -hmm. that vicinity. And um, so definitely was able to uh, use, I used your videos to help me set up the still life, watch, mm. watch those, and then uh, drew it on the canvas. And did you work from a photograph or did you work from a shadow box I, or a life? I, or? I had a, the shadow box set up, oh. so I worked from life to, for the values and the colors. Uh, at that time, I didn't think I could draw and so I used your, your method to draw, but I also cheated a bit with taking the photograph, cropping it to the same size and kind of transferring. Mm -hmm. So, but I'm getting better at drawing and cheating less and less. <laughs> well, cheating, you know, I think uh, some people think using a proportional divider is cheating. Oh, so, right. you know, it's whatever, yeah. you know. Yeah. But um, the, have you used the proportional divider? Absolutely, now? love yeah. it. Yeah, okay. and it it, sh it will teach you to draw. Yeah. I mean, it's teaching it, you the yeah. same, you know, the the same uh, process that I do when I'm when I'm working just free form. You know, if I'm just sitting down and just sketching somebody without using any sort of, I'm still thinking about proportion. I'm still saying, now where's their nose? It's one third up or whatever yeah. it is. So it's the same. Yeah. I mean, I've seen it. If you use it yeah. enough, you'll, it'll definitely teach you to draw. Yeah. Okay, so here's the. Uh, the source picture, and so tell me, you uh, to what degree did you use this uh, picture? Did you went on your? Um, did you actually use a color checker and work from life, or did you have this printed out and you kind of color checked off the, the? I used the color checker and worked from life until the watermelon disappeared, <laughs> dissolved. <laughs> and, and did you? And you had no. You you had taken this beforehand, knowing that it would probably start to you deteriorate, know, you or know, you just with. With this method and going ahead and setting up all my values and my colors and mm. ahead of time it goes pretty fast. Yeah, I yeah. think I I think I probably finished this within two days. Right. So um, it wasn't you know, but I could go back to the to the photo for reference if I, if things were kind of changing or dipping down or right 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 up. right. <laughs> Yeah, well, whenever, um, if you work from perishable, <laughs> you know, items, you need to work quickly. Yeah. Uh, and some are more perishable than others, like right. sliced watermelon, what, you've got half right. a day or, you right. know, a day or whatever. But probably where I starts. used the photo almost more than anything was drawing in with the oil pencil and getting everything right, in right. the right, in the proper order. I don't know if it's because you took the this picture 
uh, with your cell phone, probably? I, or I took it with this iPad. Oh, with the iPad. Okay, uh -huh. well, the iPad, I'm pretty sure, has got a, a pretty good fisheye lens in it. Mm. And so the angle on this uh, jar here, that it's kind of tilted out, uh -huh. that, may be, that's a, that may be a product of that. The first thing I would say was use a 50 millimeter lens or use a lens that's not a fisheye lens. And today, everybody uses uh, cell phones. And I know you just did that for the drawing part of it, but mm -hmm. that was kind of yeah. w why yeah. that ended up, you know, having a little bit of your lines being mm -hmm. goofy, you know. Okay. Um, so that's one thing. That's not a big deal. That grape right there, right? See the, the shine on the bottom of that? Right. In, in real life, that's quite a bit darker than that, mm -hmm. like a lot darker than that. But when you look at it, especially when you're sitting there and it's in front of you, you know, when you don't have a lot of experience, mm -hmm. you, you, you want to make it so much brighter than it really is because it looks like a glowing, you know, you see the glow or you see the reflection in the bottom of the grape and you want to paint it. Yeah. But that is, uh, so that's been exaggerated. Uh -huh. But a lot of these, you actually did a nice job of that. You know, what, you know the question of which one is more subtle? Mm -hmm. You know, is the, yeah. is the reflection on your grape as subtle as it is in the source? That's right. the question. And the answer here is yours is, not, is a little less subtle. Right. And, uh, and that's like my favorite um, mm -hmm. question. So, but they're good, you know. Good. Um, I'm trying to figure out what it is that really bugs me about it. And I think maybe it's something small maybe. And where I really lose the illusion is this grape here, right? It's, it's shadow is, is not, you know, properly. Right. Right, mm -hmm. it's, it's much more distinct and it's much more, mm -hmm. you know, it kind of fits, sits there on the perfect. So, so that all of a sudden, that grape kind of looks like it's just stuck on there mm -hmm. and it really doesn't fit in as well. And it's the subtlety of that little area where the shadow is. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like, uh, you know, it would work in the back of a, of a portrait, you know, but if it's a still life yeah. and it's the main show, mm -hmm. you know, I would say that these grapes look like they're floating because some of these shadows um, are not, the shape's not quite right. Mm -hmm. I see that. Um, oh, okay, good. I got a nice criticism. <laughs> it's hard. I got to look a little bit. Uh, so this is way too bright, uh -huh. right? Yeah. Can you see that? Look how much darker it is. Oh, yeah. 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 So that's just a color checking right. thing, you know? Yeah. And, and you know what that is? And, and you know, this is, uh, you say this is, what, two years ago? Uh -huh. And you've learned a lot since mm -hmm. then. So I can, sure. you know, you, maybe you know all these mm -hmm. things. But this is classic, right? Uh -huh. You see a line. Here's this line. And it goes like that. And your brain is telling you that line is the rind, you know, the rind of the of the watermelon, and it's a certain color, and it starts there, and it goes all the way back to there, and it doesn't change. Right. And your brain fixes it, you mm -hmm. know, like even though it's going into shadow, your brain knows how to make the adjustment. Mm -hmm. When reality, it's quite a bit darker than that, and so. That's, uh, that's great. And that, and I think that may be. I mean, other than, I mean, I love that this. The glass is fantastic. Okay. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm sitting here trying to think. I mean, I love that you left it alone. You didn't blend it up. You mm -hmm. know. Um, yeah, it's great. Um, the, the green uh, thingy, the green, what is that, mint? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, maybe some of these bright areas are too bright, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but then again, I'm looking at a photo and you were looking at life. So, all right, what else can I say? Okay, we've talked enough about this one. How about that? <laughs> Here, you want to flip mm -hmm. that to the next one? Sure. Okay, this one, you know, I really do like, I like all three of the ones, but this one, I guess it's just a painting. I like it probably more than the watermelons, but it's more just the subject matter, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's just kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. um, what I, uh, honestly, this is very much a matter of taste. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm not, I'm just telling you that I, I prefer the sort of, uh, you've, pumped up your sky colors and had a lot of fun, you know, with that. <laughs> and well, it, it was a ahead. very cloudy day. Yeah. And I wanted the blue sky, so I took some extra pictures later when the when the clouds kind of moved on. So I put some, a few photos together. Right, right, right. So, okay, but, but well, I, but, well, regardless, what I'll say then, again, this is a matter of taste. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, and, and people, anybody in the comments that wants to, wants to say that, like, you know, they disagree and they like mm -hmm. vivid color and they think bright blue skies are great, mm -hmm. like, 
that's fine. You know, like everybody has their own opinion about that stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. So, but I actually prefer just really natural color, you know, when I do realism. So I, I tend to, uh, you know, uh, if, if and this is just something that may, um, you know, may be helpful to you. But because these bright blue intense colors are up here in the sky, now I maybe don't appreciate the yellow in the boat as much, mm -hmm. you know, because that, that's just painted. Um, in fact, the, the colors, at least in this source uh, picture, are basically muted a lot. You, you worked from life. You started from life, was, and then what happened? I was you... set up plein air mm -hmm. and di didn't have the time to finish it right there. So I put my, I did a sample of all of my colors to make sure I brought them back right. accurately. And then were you using it a color home. checker, or how were Absolutely. you? Absolutely. Oh, really? Yeah. And you didn't have tr issues with glare and everything. I did. I, oh, you I, did. <laughs> I always struggle through that. Yeah, right. And right. then, um, and this is at Rockport here in Texas, and oh, so windy. So yeah. It's always oh, kind of blowing around. Yeah, yeah. And um, so. Wow. Well, congratulations for Thank dealing you. with that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I know what it's like to paint plain air. Yeah. Um, so this this painting, it's a lovely painting because it's just you know, pretty painting that I would like, again, I would hang it down in, 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 in my house, you know. Um, but um, if I wanted to criticize it, and, I, and if you were, you know, I'm looking at this photo, you were working from life, it's very different. But um, there's a lot of, uh, you know, um, color issues. Uh, your color, your yellow, um, the yellow boat color is much brighter, mm -hmm. much more intense. This is a much more brown, neutral right. yellow that looks like, you know, this looks more like a, a natural old boat color. And Weathered. so, yeah. yeah, so the tendency of, of, of you know, um, is for people to amp up their colors. That's mm -hmm. very, much more common than the other way around. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the, if you want to see some really wonderful color, if I was painting this boat, mm -hmm. I would have painted it absolutely in the in the muted, you know, neutral colors that I saw. Mm -hmm. And then if I did want to pump up the yellow in the boat, I would or, or yellow in the um, striping there, I would, you know, you could take some of this bright yellow and just by putting a little bit of it here and there, mm -hmm. that is a lot more yummy yeah. and a lot more than than just kind of amping the colors up across the board. You know what I mean? If that I makes, and, and they're not like really that amped up. You know what I mean? But that's just my own. Mm -hmm. Like um, again, if you if you were gonna come to you know the Mark Carter School of Painting or whatever, and and we had our day out to do plain air, I wouldn't permit you to to amp up your colors. You right. Know, to, in in terms of teaching you and mm -hmm. everything. All right. Okay. So here are the three goats that you painted, and you said you have some goats on your farm. Yes. Right, and you like goats a lot? Dairy goats, yes. Right, and we don't have the source for this one, but um, so I can't, you know, get into details about, you know, value problems and everything else. Um, I think that you have, you, you've taken some liberties with color, right? Yes, I mean, I did. you sort of, you know, you, how, many, how many paintings have you painted in total? Um, probably about 75. Oh, wow. You've been very active. <laughs> I stay busy, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, here's what I would say, mm -hmm. is that, again, if you were going to come to my you know, school of painting, which I don't have, but if I had a curriculum, I would say, and, and I tell this to all my private class people, I say, look, the first, first thing you do is you paint uh, 10 complicated still lifes or 20 simple still lifes. Mm -hmm. And you set them up, and you work from life, and you, um, you can work from photographs, but preferably work from life, just mm -hmm. so you don't have to deal with the whole photography thing. Mm -hmm. And you um, don't change anything. You you know you're not permitted to, to change colors, to amp colors, to you know to do anything at all. We're going to faithfully paint what we see, right. and then through that process, you learn what natural color is. In other words, that's I realize mm -hmm. um, that's a long term. You know, well you've painted 75 paintings. You've been going fast, mm -hmm. <laughs> but. To do that, that would be what I would advise anybody if you want to learn natural color and you want to, you know, really ingrain, mm -hmm. you know, uh, the ability to see and sort of have a sense about what color really is and everything else mm -hmm. before you start taking a lot of liberties, right? Um, now, you can do whatever you want, you know, mm -hmm. like I'm not trying, I'm not promoting my method or anything. I'm just mm -hmm. saying that in the criticism of this painting, you've gone and you've played with color and that's a wonderful thing to do and it's fun and artists you know uh, should do it all that they want but um, 
I think that a lot of the uh, sort of pastel -y, amped up, mm -hmm. you know, fun colors, again, it's just a matter of taste. You know, I love super duper natural color. I'm sort of, you mm -hmm. know, but I recognize that that's my own, right. you know, taste and everything else. So I don't want to criticize that anymore, but that's what I would tell you is sort of, if anything, I would say, you know, maybe um, paint some paintings where you change nothing. Right. And you work strictly following the color checking, only as an educational thing, mm -hmm. only as a way to really learn what natural color is. When, when you're mixing colors from life and you're, um, you know, mixing your rows of color, starting like if you're going to mix the white of the of the fur, and you start with the darkest, and you go through all your steps all the way up to the light. You know, mm -hmm. when you do that, you're essentially uh, making color charts. Yeah. But you're making color charts from life, and you're finding out that life isn't what you think it is, mm -hmm. right? Right. I mean, especially early on, you probably you know were found you're much more surprised. Amazed. Yeah. And now you're not as surprised, mm -hmm. right? You sort of like can almost see yeah. it, right? Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what it's all about. So, um, but a lot of times people come into my, uh, they take my private class and then they do their still life in here and then I send it home to them. And they get it out of the box mm -hmm. and they say it's so much darker than mm -hmm. they remembered. Right. And they think the paint went dark or something. Mm -hmm. But nothing happened. It's just that my stu when, when you're here in a studio, mm -hmm. you can see how bright it is, mm -hmm. right? And now we've got the filming lights on. But I mean, in mm -hmm. general, this is pretty bright, mm -hmm. you know? And that's good. And that's, you know, um, uh, the, the, the reason is if you say, well, I don't want my, let's say you take this painting that's been painted in bright studio light and you take it home and you put it in your living room and it looks dark and dingy. Mm -hmm. So you say, oh, I should have painted it brighter because I want it to look good in my living room. But the problem is, is that if you do that and then you take it back into the good studio light, now it looks overexposed, mm -hmm. your colors are blown out, it doesn't have the richness in the shadows. There's all those, and if you go back and you look at all the old, you know, the Rubens and the Rembrandts and all those paintings, they were all the same way. They had the full richness of the color, but they have to be seen in a museum, and they're well lit, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, so anyway, that's, uh, um, I saw this firsthand because I went to, uh, back when I was doing portraits. Do you remember that movie, The Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil? That uh, it was a, a best-selling book, and then they made a movie out it. Clint Eastwood directed it. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so I was doing a portrait in that home at the time when they were making that movie, a big full-length portrait, mm -hmm. and that was this famous house, and they had a Rubens in the kitchen, and they had a sergeant hanging over the mantel, yeah. and I couldn't believe how dark and dingy, they, neither of them had uh, you know, lights on them, mm -hmm. they were just in the, in the house, and you could hardly even see the Rubens in the kitchen, it was so dark. You know, and the, and the sergeant, you, it was, you know, I was used to seeing them in museums where they were well lit. Yeah. So that's just paintings have to be well lit, you know, and they, and they rarely are well lit, so that's an issue. Um, you don't have any other um, things you want to ask me specifically about? I, I, I can't think of, I've always got a million questions, yeah. but um, I'm, I think that because of the way that you, and I just can't say enough, of what a um, pure teacher you are, and that's very rare. Yeah, you well, you 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 like you. I like to take credit for you know putting mm -hmm. out all these free videos, but it's mm -hmm. just a business plan. You that's, know, like I'm just yeah, I'm but, literally that's how I market my my art supplies. Right. That's how I market my the videos that I sell. Yeah. So it's not like I'm trying to be nice or anything. You know what I mean? I'm just now m maybe I, I can take well, credit for being a no, you know, not having, not being BS and, and telling it like it is and all that. But right. as far as, uh, you know, it's not like I'm out there yeah, doing charity. The, the way that you teach is very, it's with the clarity and everything that you've done for me. To me, you laid it out just yeah. like perfectly for Thank me you. to follow, and I just. I hope, I feel like I haven't really given you a lot of good advice. Oh my gosh, yes, yeah. It, really? There's a, there's only so much this people in can hold. <laughs> but you got some good tips? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's such an honor meeting you. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. It's nice to meet you. I, I, uh, I'm in my little world in here, you know, doing my YouTube videos. Well, I don't get a lot of interaction. I, love I get private class interaction. Yeah. People come and take my private yeah. class. Yeah. But it's kind of a one on one, and yeah. so I appreciate it. Yeah. yeah. And by the way, I have my own art supply company right here in Austin, Texas. 
and we manufacture all of our own products. We have a whole line of paint and brush holders, palettes, color checkers, all sorts of things. So go check that out if you haven't at GenevaFineArt.com.